everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. In this week's vlog, I'm heading out for a run. Behind me is Brackenwood Garden Centre and we've just done our usual morning weekend morning activities of going for a nice walk in the woods, going to the garden centre, buying more plants so we don't have space to put anywhere, and now I'm going for a run. And I'll be running the whole way back home, which is like 10, 12 kilometres or something, and doing it at a very, very easy pace. And along the way, I will tell you about how my training's been going for my ultra marathon, and just do a little update, because I feel like all of my vlogs recently have had like a particular purpose. This one is purposeless. It's just a nice little run in the woods. I think it's going to pour with rain as well and uh, I guess we can uh, catch up then. Today's audiobook of choice is Training for the Uphill Athlete by well a few authors but not least Killian Journey and it is absolutely fascinating. Um, by listening to audiobook I am missing out on all of the incredible graphs and data that they put in in visual form um, which obviously you don't get with an audiobook but in terms of the content oh my god it is so interesting and has a lot on a lot that basically makes me feel good about the fact that I did my four weeks of Project BAM base training before settling into the program that I'm currently on now and that's because um, it talks a huge amount about capacity training which is essentially what my base training is building up your capacity to take on more intensity um, and volume later on in the training program and how if you don't do that before kind of doing the more intense training you basically just end up capitulating and uh, burning out or overtraining or whatever uh, which is what has happened for the vast majority of my other races I end up having to pull back at some stage um, whereas with this I mean there's still plenty of time <laughs> to get it wrong but um, so far so good this week has been the most tiring week so far I'm in week seven of, out of 16 um, but that's actually because I've been doing far fewer zone two runs than my usual which is why I'm not doing a super long run today and tomorrow as well I'm actually just doing two very nice and easy zone two runs to keep it chill and give my body a time to recover before going into next week's training. So for these runs today and tomorrow, um, the zone two part is so important because as it talks about in my book the more you do into an anaerobic um, sort of state uh, the better your body gets to anaerobic exercise but worse it also gets at doing all your runs in aerobic state um, hence the importance of zone one and zone two and like whatever if you don't do heart rate that's fine just conversational pace runs which is why I'm walking up that little bit my heart rate's 153 which is almost 10 bpm below the top of zone two but when it gets towards the top i'm just taking it a little bit easy and i haven't been very strict with myself this week i've been going for runs with other people and doing all sorts that has meant that i've been doing all of my runs a little bit too fast and i can really feel it whereas yesterday i did a nice easy 5k really really easy and then some so I did 30 minutes on the tread zone two and then 20 minutes climbing and genuinely felt more recovered after that than I did before it and I guess that's the whole point in recovery runs like I do not get or at least I did not get how going for a run could actually help you recover more than not going for a run and there's obviously still uh, very much space to have proper recovery days where you actually do nothing but yesterday was the first time I've ever gone for a run and felt better after it um, like actually more well rested after it 
than I did before it. Oh, and we're up into zone three again. This is the one thing that I do find frustrating that I know a lot of you guys agree with. The uh, walk run situation when you're doing zones training. Um, but it's working. Let me tell you, it is working. So just before we get back to our beautiful scenery and I'll shut up, um, I did this 5K 30 minute run yesterday and I did it at between 10 and 15 BPM lower than I did it four weeks ago despite it being half a minute per kilometer faster than it was four weeks ago. So that shows the training is actually working and the fact that I can do what is almost a zone one run is kind of crazy to me because four weeks ago, although I was finding it easy to shuffle in zone two, I was not finding it easy to run. And yesterday I did a run and it was 141 BPM average over 31 minutes, bearing in mind my zone two max is 161 BPM, so 20 BPM lower. And it felt really good. And um, yeah, that's in literally the space of six weeks that has happened. And to me, that is bonkers. So although the training can be boring, the progress certainly is not. So that's what's keeping me motivated at the moment. Here's just some really speedy progress, if not some really speedy running. If you're interested in um, hearing more about the low heart rate training that I've been doing and why I've been doing it, um, go and check out my video Project BAM, Project Become a Machine. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds a bit cliche, but I don't know. I think it's worked. I feel like it's done a good job. Anyway, that, that kind of explains a little bit more about it. Um, for now though, I'm back using the Runner app, R-U-N-N-A. Um, which has put together a plan for me for running my 220, 225 kilometer, five day ultra marathon in Sweden uh, towards the end of September, which is terrifying for me to even say, let alone actually do. Um, but I'm super excited about it and really uh, enjoying my training, especially now it has a little bit of interval training in it as well. So I'm no longer just doing zone two base training runs, um, I'm doing one or two uh, interval training sessions a week as well and this week's one was one kilometer repeat so one kilometer at um, 10k pace and then one kilometer float so basically recovery but not no walking and actually quite a fast jog um, and I did that for six kilometers um, thank you and that was good fun, but I did feel pretty knackered afterwards because I've not done that much interval training recently. Um, but interestingly, despite the fact that I've not done interval training in months, other than last week and this week, um, my paces are exactly as they were, which I did not expect. It felt a bit alien to be running that fast, but actually all the paces are still there. So my biggest fear, which was that running slow is going to make me really slow um, well so far hasn't come to fruition which is a relief but to be honest like when I'm running five days 225 kilometers I'm not going to need to I'm certainly not going to want to run fast so it's more about just building like a well-rounded aerobic system all this training rather than getting particularly speedy um, and I do, of course, for those of you who don't know, have OCC in August and that will be a little bit speedier because it's one day, 55 kilometers. Um, so I'll need a little bit more punch in the legs for that. A little bit spicy, that one. Um, but otherwise, slow and steady wins the race. Not that I'm expecting to win anything ever. <laughs> 
but that's the goal at least. Coming up to the viewpoint, uh, just doing a very wiggly route around Lee Woods today. Um, <laughs> got a little bit lost somehow, despite coming here all the time. There you go. I mean, how many times have I shown you this? But it's still beautiful. Every time, Clifton Suspension Bridge, the observatory, Clifton Observatory, very pretty. I love it here, absolutely love it. Four and a half K in. Heart rate very low. <laughs> you know Moved into Ashton Court now, heading around. <clears throat> it is <laughs> so threatening to rain. Uh, it has been like 100% humidity and like it feels like any second now there's going to be a thunderstorm but it's been feeling like that for an hour and a half now and so far nothing <laughs> so I'm not really sure what's going on I almost want it to rain you know that pressure it's just kind of stressful uh, but I'm out having a good time now and taking it super easy I definitely am tired this will be I mean, I've never done so much consistent high mileage for me training in my life. So this is what the sixth, seventh week of that. And my body start, is like starting to catch up. Um, but that's why the runner program is so good because it does everything around your schedule. So you can literally put in like, I want to train three days a week or five days a week, or I basically say six days a week because then each run can be shorter rather than trying to fit all my mileage into three days. Um, yeah, and then it gives you suggested workouts or runs or whatever and builds you up really slowly, which I think is so important. If I was training myself, I'd be like, oh, I should already be on like 70 kilometers a week. Whereas in my plan is, you know, very much sticking to the 10% rule, which is great. Um, if any of you guys, by the way, go into London Marathon, Congrats, let me know in the comments below. Um, but if you have a race coming up, definitely check out the runner app. It's like somewhere between having an online coaching plan um, and an actual personal coach. It's way better than just like buying a plan off the internet um, because it actually knows you can put in your ability, the race that you're training for, your current times so that all the paces are correct, etc., etc. Um, and if you want to check it out, use the code FLORA and it gives you two weeks free. Um, I'm an ambassador of theirs. Uh, I just think it's really good. I've been using it for, I don't know, like nearly a year now, I think. Trained, got my 10 kpb with them and now training for an ultra marathon. So the whole shebang. And I'm thinking, I think I'll do a half marathon later in the year, like towards winter as well, just to see, just to see what it's all about. I've never actually raced a half marathon, so it will be interesting. <sighs> Probably a good distance, actually. A little bit easier than an ultra marathon, um, but a little bit slower than a 10K, which is nice.
incapable of walking past a cute dog and not saying hi. Um, I, very, I love all dogs, don't get me wrong, but there are certain types of dogs that I'm completely obsessed with. Um, most collies, Dalmatians, but only the fun ones, uh, Dutch Shepherds, Belgian Malinois, German Shepherds, especially the puppies, uh, and Bavarian Mountain Hounds. And that is it. <laughs> Those are my like proper obsession dogs. Uh, yeah, very strange. I am aware it's not completely normal. Anyway, good way of keeping the heart rate down. A little bit of puppy therapy mid run. maybe 2k back home uh, yeah bringing my weekly total up to about 58 kilometers which for me is quite a lot especially as that involves some uh, faster pace running which would explain why my legs are tired and this might be the first week ever of training in my life at least running training where my legs have tired before my heart and lungs have because um, I've got really strong legs and not very strong heart and lungs, at least not for an endurance runner. Um, and so I've always struggled with volume of training because I guess I do it too fast. My legs can handle it, but my heart and my lungs can't, which is what I was struggling with earlier this year with all my heart problems. Um, but because of the ease of the training, pace-wise, um, not volume-wise, it's been a lot easier on my heart and lungs. And so finally my legs are actually getting tired because they're not used to running this much. It's kind of amazing. done I'm exhausted not from the run just from uh, this whole week of just so much stuff I think it's really easy to forget that the body has one response to stress and that includes all stress whether that is you know social life work life home running any other exercise just being on your feet all day like all of it just counts as stress and your body just takes that as stress it doesn't give you separate pots of energy for running and everyday life as anyone who has had a busy week and then tried to do a long run on the weekend will know it's uh it's it's all a little bit you just gotta basically be nice to your body so that's what i'm doing i was supposed to do 21k today and i did 12 and a half instead there is no training benefit to me to doing 21k i know that i can run that distance no problem but what is important for me is being able to run not only this week but also next week and the week after and the week after etc etc for the whole 16 weeks of this training program i'd much rather just take it a little bit easier on some of the runs to allow my body time to recover and then really be able to push it at the times that i actually need to than to overdo it on weekends like this where the training program says 21k and um i just don't feel capable of doing 21k plus actually I've done so much mileage this week that if I followed the training plan this weekend I'd end up doing far too many kilometers this week so I'm at 58 so far it's Saturday today so I'll do another 10k tomorrow which will take me to 68 which will be two 68 kilometer weeks in a row which is by far the most I've ever done which is awesome although I am heading out to Trails and Roots Chamonix next week midway through the week so I will be basically like doing a kind of mini taper from Monday through till Thursday and then the 
trail camp starts on the Friday and I want to be refreshed for that so that I can get the most out of it. It's not really a taper. It's more just like I'm only going to be doing easy runs rather than some intense workouts because I know that I'm going to want to spend all of my time out on the trails as soon as I get out there and I'm super excited about it. And of course, I'll be vlogging plenty of the days out there as well so that you guys can see what we get up to. And also some people ask me about the recovery after a run, what sort of stuff that I do. I think I've covered this before, but basically like the number one thing as soon as I get in is water. On runs like today's run, despite the fact that it's very warm, I did not take out any water or food because I knew that I, I knew my way home. I knew exactly where I was. I knew how long it was gonna take me. So I'm seriously dehydrated. So get a lot of water as soon as I get in. That might include electrolytes as well, especially on a warm day like today. And then carbohydrates and protein. So I do a kind of like three to one ratio of carbs to protein, replenish glycogen stores, make sure that the muscles get their replenishment as well from the protein to make them most out of the training session, you can't get the benefits from a training session unless you are fueling correctly. That is so important. Our bodies do not respond simply to training. They respond to the training in the time and in the recovery time that we give them. And that includes food and nutrition, etc. as well. So that's really important to remember. If I'd done a really long run this morning, I may well have an afternoon nap, especially later on in a training program. I start to get pretty tired because fatigue is sort of like a never ending companion to uh, endurance training. And and I'm very, very willing to take extra rest as and when I require it. And that might involve an afternoon nap of 20 minutes or so. Power napping is my thing. I used to have insomnia and I got very, very good at power napping during the day, during my A-levels, which has stood me in good stead for ultra running. <laughs> so yeah, even if it's, it's 12.45 now, so actually I will just have my lunch and that will involve carbs and protein in it as well. But even if it wasn't a meal time, I would come back, I would have whatever, toast and peanut butter and a protein shake or crumpets and marmite in a protein shake or fried tofu or tempeh or whatever on toast or whatever. It's not, I, I'm really, really strict with myself and with other people. It does not need to be a meal time for you to have a good quantity of food. It's about replenishing your body after it has just run a long way across the countryside. So yeah, that is kind of my recovery protocol. I don't really think there's anything else. I don't do anything like ice baths. Sometimes, especially in winter, I'll have a nice warm bath to like basically recover my muscles, especially after a really long run or a particularly hilly one. And then sometimes, especially if I've got muscle soreness from going to the gym and all that kind of stuff, I might use my Theragun or those compression trousers, the inflatable ones. My master, that's the one which I'm completely obsessed with. But yeah, I mean, on a run like today, you know, it's only 12 and a half K, it's not anything major. And the main thing for me is actually just sitting down and having proper recovery time doing nothing rather than immediately, you know, getting up and getting out the house. I do actually have a party to go to this afternoon, which I'm whatever I'm slightly tired for, but generally, literally, I'm just going to sit down and do kind of nothing except for eating and drinking for the next couple of hours before going to this party to make sure that I am actually sufficiently rested and then sleep tonight. It will be an early night and um, hopefully I'll get my nine hours, which is what I want. I never quite get nine hours, but that is always my goal is, is nine hours of sleep overnight, um, which as you do more and more training becomes more and more important. When I'm not training, I can get by on six and six or seven hours. I don't love it, but I can do that. Whereas Whereas when I'm training, it becomes so, so, so important for me to get enough sleep. So that's it for this week's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely go and check out the runner app. If you do have any races coming up, they have everything from like couch to 5k to half marathons, full marathons. They also do trail marathons. So hilly trail marathons have a kind of different training program for example, to a road marathon, and they are set up for that. And then they go all the way up to five day multi-day ultra marathons, which is what I'm doing. Um, and don't forget to use the code FLORA for two weeks free. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And I will see you next week, hopefully out in Chamonix. I'm so excited. <laughs> see you there. Thanks again for watching. Bye.